Windsor has the worst transit system I've ever come across. That's what the Amalgamated Transit Union's international vice president had to say. And he's been in the business for over 35 years. So I guess Windsor could say that we're either the best at one thing or the absolute worst at one thing. Depends on whether or not you want to see the glass half full or half empty. Either way, I don't think it's a great situation to be in, especially after finding labor peace after a strike was averted. But if this is labor peace, I don't want to see labor unrest. Joining me right now, Ward 9 Councillor Kieran McKenzie. This is not a great state of affairs. No, it's not. And um, uh, just to be frank, um, the uh, the quote and uh, from uh, from the uh, uh, the union vice president is not incorrect. Uh, I'm not surprised to you know it, it, there's no measurement where the city of Windsor would be in uh, would be in good standing with respect to the delivery of transit services. That should come as no surprise to anyone uh, at City Hall with Transit Windsor or um, who's been sitting around the council table, even just for this term alone, let alone anyone who's been sitting around the council table for multiple terms. Our transit system has been deliberately underfunded as, uh, as intentional decisions of council after council after council. That is not a critique, that is fact. That, so the fact that we're not doing well in terms of delivering those services should be a uh, uh, just just be recognized as that is the obvious outcome that would come from what the city has chosen, what councils have chosen to do with respect to transit funding. So, you know, I remember, I think it was maybe last year's budget, the year before, there was a conversation about adding another maintenance service tech because these are really, you know, technological buses. Now they're not the old uh, ICE buses, but some of them, so that requires more sophistication. But we had one guy, he was on vacation. So the, the request was maybe we hire someone else. So when he's on vacation, buses don't go down and sit out. This article that we're looking at here that CTV put out, there was a situation during Christmas when there wasn't enough tires in stock to replace worn out tires. So buses were just parked. We also know that there's not enough room in the bus depot right now for buses to all be parked, meaning that some are parked outside when it gets very cold, it takes longer for them to start up. That means it takes longer for that route to get going at the start of the day. I mean, this doesn't, it doesn't just sound like underfunding, Karen. It sounds like this is a transit system in collapse. It is collapsing, um, but I would go back to, and I think that given the resources that are allocated to Transit Windsor, the administration and the staff uh, are doing amazing work trying to stitch together a viable transit system with the resources that they are allocated. We are, as a council, choosing to make it impossible for them to do that. There are structural and systemic issues that can't be fixed by people just working harder or potentially working longer. There aren't enough hoists in the current garage to fix the buses that are breaking down all the time because they're old. We have old buses on the streets because we're not funding Transit Windsor to be able to appropriately replace the fleet in the timeline that they the buses need to be replaced. We don't have enough room in the garage to park the buses that we need to augment the service levels. It has nothing to do with the people that are working in Transit Windsor currently. It has to do with the decisions that are being made around the council table. And it's not to denigrate those council decisions. The previous councils and our current council made decisions to not fund transit in the way that would need that it would need to be funded in order for the service to be even average. That is a conscious decision. And that is the decision councils made. And the outcomes are playing out every single day on our streets. And we see the complaints from riders continue to, you know, they, they make their way throughout the media. And rightfully so, we saw a fair increase with, you know, what's arguably a ongoing service reduction here. But there was money that was allocated $100 million in 2022. And some of that is going to be going, I want to talk specifically about a new East End transit uh, bus terminal. So how would that help things? Not much because that East End Transit Terminal already exists on to in the Tecumseh Mall. It's being moved because there's infrastructure improvements that are happening to the Tecumseh Mall. So it's it's at best it's a break even on on, on that. And in that, in, in fairness, that project isn't costing us all that much. The challenge that you with the hundred million dollars that you referenced, 
we chose to make investments in bus shelters and fare boxes rather than address the systemic and infrastructure issues that need to be addressed to, to actually even give us the opportunity to, to, to have a pathway to improve the service. That $100 million, that was the way I voted, I believe council made, a, made an incorrect decision. My choice was to use those funds to offset the cost of a new transit garage. Council chose a different direction. I respect the decision that they made, but I don't think that that was the correct decision because now we're seeing it play out. We structurally cannot, in, in, in short order, implement any of the changes that are required to address the problems that we're having. How much are we spending on that uh, expansion of the garage of the hundred million? Do you know offhand? Zero. Okay, zero on an actual expansion of it. Okay, there might be uh, there was there was funding that's allocated to a transit garage in this upcoming in this in this just this recent budget. Yeah, a fraction of what it would cost. So we're starting to quote squirrel money away, but we're nowhere near the. And look, it's not an insubstantial investment. We're talking anywhere from three to four hundred million dollars. For a transit garage, that's what it. That's what the you know the going rate is, and I'm probably on the low end of the spectrum there. But again, given that we cannot do the things that we need to do to improve the service without addressing these issues with the garage, and short of that, everything else is window dressing and um, uh, tinkering around the edges. Oh, I, I'd call it band aids. Personally, I'm looking here at a mm -hmm. photograph that was uh, fr included of the transit, our current transit garage, of course, the the one that exists, and these portable hoists that have been brought in that you know you're referencing we're down to half this I, I you know i'm not one to say if it's a safety concern or not but i'm looking at hoists that are just strapped to wooden pallets and the first thing i'm thinking is just like so these are lifting up buses well look i don't know enough to question the workplace health and safety issues if they're Neither there then, then then they're there but having the the idea that we need to have portable hoists brought in on any given day, John, we have more buses that need repair than the capacity in the garage to repair them. That is a fundamental and structural problem. So we can't fix the buses fast enough with the equipment that we have. And by the way, the buses are breaking down constantly, again, because they're old. Deliberate choices. These are the outcomes. Council should be happy to live with them because those are the choices that we've made to not invest in transit, to be able to deliver a service that's not the worst in the country. That's what we are. We should understand that. And if that's what we choose to continue to do, then then that's the decision of council. Of course, though, that's not what you would like to see. Of course, you'll respect the decision of council, but your vision for Transit Windsor is very different than what it looks like today. There's absolutely no question. Our, and, and, and today and every single day after today, it becomes more and more important for us to be investing in these core services. Housing is obviously at the top of the list in terms of things we need to address. Transit is right there next to it in terms of what a city that's growing at the pace that our city is growing with the economic opportunity that we have and the investments that are coming. We need to be thinking like a big city. We're not. And the status quo, unfortunately, will no longer get us to where we need to be. I respect the decisions that have that have come before. But right now we're in a critical moment where we have to recognize that these opportunities that we've created for ourselves with good work from administration council and, and all of the other players who have been a part of that, that that means we have to do things differently, which means including investing appropriately in transit to improve that system from anything but the worst in the country, anything but that. Let's at least start the trajectory line moving in a positive direction because we're not doing that right now. Well, I think we could start like a campaign. We got to just choose whatever the second worst in the country is. And then we just, we target them aggressively. We just figure mm -hmm. out how do we just get past them? Is it one more mm -hmm. bus? Is it one more shelter? Just anything to get past the PR. And then we can get to actually, you know, putting the shovels in the crowd and trying to figure it out. But Karen, more seriously, how do you respond to constituents who rely on this service, even at status quo, uh, how, when they say it's not working? You, you don't communicate to me when buses are canceled. Buses just drive right past the stops. There aren't enough buses. They're crowded. I mean, what, how do you respond? I tell them the truth, which I always do. And it's not it's not pleasant. These are the express decisions of council. And I tell them that I will continue to advocate for 
improvements in that service uh, from the beginning of my time, my, my electoral journey and my journey as a counselor. I've, I've been I've recognized transit as a, a, a department and an agency that's underfunded. Um, and I fought for those investments to move forward. I think we have moved the needle to a certain extent, but in comparison to the demand that is out there and the growing demand, we haven't kept pace with even the poor service that we were delivering, you know, for, for many, many years. So we're in this, you know, from a transit perspective, a not a very good moment where we already had a bad service. We've made a lot of choices in terms of allocating funds into places that I don't think help us to improve service levels dramatically over the short and medium term. And now we have massive pressure on the demand side. So it's uh, it's a number of different um, factors that are converging, the so-called perfect storm that, uh, that have put us in a really tough position. Um, the way to dig out of this is to fund the service appropriately. Simple as that. Board 9 Councillor Kieran McKenzie, thank you so much for your time and for talking about this very important issue. Appreciate your interest in the issue, John. Thank you.